All right, so today we are going to be playing Super Mario Sunshine the way Nintendo intended for us. You might be wondering, how am I going to do that? There ain't any guide mode in this game. Well, it's quite simple. I went on eBay and I purchased myself this beautiful guidebook for Super Mario Sunshine from 2002. And we're going to be using this to beat Super Mario Sunshine the way Nintendo intended. All right, let's start this in three, two, one, go. First shine is the airstrip. This has a medium difficulty. That's kind of scary. I assumed you would start off on easy, but this is a medium difficulty level. When your plan lands on Aldefino, chat with the town folks and the toads. All right. Well, we better do that. Oh, this is the worst. Mario, please go get some help. Well, there is a local right here. Let's talk to this local. Maybe they know something. What's, what are you waiting for? Do something. This gooey paint of yours completely covered my friend. I feel like I've seen you somewhere and recently too. Nah. Help, help. Are you crazy? We're the ones who need help. Take the water pump and clean the airstrip. Well, we better pick up this pump then. It says, run to the far end of the runway and pick up Flood. He will show you the basic hovering and squirting techniques. I don't know why they use the word squirt, but it's whatever. All right, now once we have the pump, it says, head to the runway and douse the generator. You can ignore the pink goop. Just hit the center-shaped start area. All right, and now it says that when he opens his mouth, you are supposed to press the R button to squirt him. All right. Nice. And then it says to claim our first shine sprite. Here we go. Shine get. But before we get further into today's video, a quick word from today's sponsor. Are you ready for an adventure like no other? Then look no further than Guardian Tales for the Nintendo Switch. Guardian Tales is an amazing adventure RPG filled with tons of content. And the variety of support characters and weapons in this game is massive. You can equip all sorts of weaponry, from swords to bows to even hammers and yes, even rocket launchers. And all weapons and characters have their own skills, which makes the combat much more fun. And the game features some amazing side quest content, from PvP to creating your own guilds with friends to even customizing one of your own floating islands. It is so much fun. And if it wasn't enough, from December 27th to January 10th, you can get 50 free summons or 10th per day, which is definitely able to help you out in your journey. Plus, with the variety of themes to explore, including fantasy, Christmas, academy, snow mountains, desert, you name it, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't check this out if you're a JRPG fan. So, if you want to get a really good JRPG game, then definitely check out Guardian Tales on the Nintendo Switch today. The link is in the description of this video, so please check it out if you want to support the channel and you want to check out a good, cute JRPG game. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. I can't believe the official name of this goo enemy is the Gunk Generator. Are you serious? I didn't even know this cutscene existed. What the hell? We're supposed to go and spray the gunk generator in the middle of the plaza and out pops the piranha plant. We're gonna use the same technique as before to dispatch it. Thankfully on some earlier pages, they taught me techniques that I can press to aim in first person. Whew, saved. No, Shadow Mario pops up from the top and kidnaps Princess Peach. We gotta chase down Mario to the fruit stand. Press R to spray him with water as he runs. Not fair, completely unfair. You shouldn't be allowed to use tools like that. All right, now let's follow him. All right, here we go. Bianco Hills, level one, I found it. That's actually a really cool map. Honestly, if you're playing this game casually, this is sick, look at this. This is honestly pretty freaking cool. Like this would help a lot with the blue coins. This is a good map. This is. Episode 1, Road to the Big Windmill. This has a difficulty level of medium. All right, head up the wide slope, follow along the path, and collect the golden coins as you go. From here, you should bounce onto the second rope to get across and go through the spinning wooden platform. All right, gotta make sure we get all the gold coins too. I already failed. Okay. And we're supposed to grab onto this rope and jump over here. Walk around here. Aye. Okay, make sure to pick up the golden coins like they said. Okay. Whew. All right, we did it. 
If you stand in this for three seconds, you will lose health. So make sure to use the hover nozzle to clear a path through it. That seems like a terrible strap, but sure, I'll use the hover nozzle to clear through it. Yeah, sure. Let's not spray ahead of us. Okay, we made it up. After you clear the sides, make sure to take aim and spray. All right. And now we're supposed to shoot water in his mouth. I'm simplifying. If I read every single thing this guidebook says, we will be here for years. Shine again! Alright. Time for level 2. Down with Petey Piranha. This is another medium difficult level. Thankfully, from the advice from last page, we know that you can press A and B to jump dive to go faster. Which is pretty pog. Now we gotta make sure we follow this path though. We don't wanna miss the path. And remember that to clear out of the path, they recommend me to use A and hover ahead and then go backwards. Because this is such a good strategy. Here they said to jump and hover. It's a very tight hover though. Whew, first try though. Nice. Well, this is the first one. They said this one was easy, so no worries. Okay. Okay, so just a jump. This one we had to do a jump and a hover. And we have to be careful because if we fall, we slide down. Okay. And it's for this last one, we have to jump right in midair, start hovering and holding left. Here we go. Woo! Okay. Now we have to stay onto the small platform attached to the windmill sails. When Petey starts to yawn, press the Y button to change into first person and aim the water into his gullet. All right. What do I do down? Oh God. He will own pro for 10 seconds, go onto his belly and then do a ground pound. Whew. Okay. And now we have to do the same thing again, two more times. We did it. I'm glad we're finally playing this the right way. Was getting pretty sick of all the speed running we've been doing here lately. No worries, I got you. Shine get. Oh boy, Chad. It's time for things to start getting crazy. Episode 3 is hard difficulty. A couple of CD pods took over the initial path, so we have to take them out before continuing. Why? Why? I can use from that. Whatever, okay. <clears throat> we first have to take them out by spraying them from a range before the burrow, and then ground pound them when they're dazed. All right, little is happening in the valid village, so take your preferred route into the palm trees. A new rope is attached to a small windmill platform. It's possible to do a triple jump and lead from the stone platform to the hill nearby, but it's much easier to use the rope platforms. Well, I think we're gonna use the rope platforms then. I don't know, what do you think, chat? Should we try and use the rope or should we try and use the triple jump on those stones right there? We should do the triple jump just so we learn it. All right. Let's do it then, Chad. Here we go. Let's go! We did it! Jump up the horizontally moving block until you reach the top one that's moving vertically. All right. Now watch your movement. One wrong move and you will plummet to your demise. Change the camera to the side. So you can tell which blocks are horizontal and vertical. I think this is terrible to have the camera this way, but sure. Okay, and I should supposed to stay on these two middle paths. I should move down here. <gasps> oh god! Okay. Okay. Okay, so when this platform moves clockwise past us, we have to hold forward and not stop. Now! It didn't even work. It didn't even work! Oh, let me get back there. We got this. Almost. Now! Let's try to do it now. <gasps> yes, we did it! Now two rotating star platforms are ahead. So jump when the yellow part is pointing towards me. Now. Okay. Now. 
All right, now let's do it. Yellow part, jump. We did it! That's the first of many platformers, but they're gonna get much harder as time goes on. Oh no, but this was already hard difficulty. Well, at least we got it, it's fine. Let's try and finish up Bianco right now. Shine again. Oh boy, episode five. Petey Piranha strikes back. Hard difficulty. We have to run down the pathway, go over the stream, and survey the goop-based damage. Why do we have to survey the damage? Okay. Check the building with the two turrets. And notice a new rope strung from the rocky hillside. So according to the instructions, we shouldn't waste time clearing the area, but we should surveil the damage. Wow, this looks very bad, Chad. Oh no. For my survey, I think they are in big trouble and we need to help them, Chad. All right, we were supposed to jump onto this building. And apparently there should be a new rope that was installed onto one of these. Oh, I found it. Okay. I didn't even know that rope was added for this mission. I'm being dead serious. I am such a speedrunner. I didn't even... I literally didn't know until they explained to me what building it was that this building now had an installed rope. I had never noticed that rope, ever. By now, you've noticed a herd of pink clitters called Poinks. No idea they were called Poinks. Move to the middle of the fence where there is a gap in the cross beams. Press the Y button to take aim in first person view, then start spraying. The point will inflate as it's consuming water, turning red, then bursts, flying into the sky. Aim one of those flying points at Petey, who is sleeping on the other side. When Petey awakens, leave down to the village area. Okay, spray water at him to make him fall down. Clear the goo around him and wait to be able to squirt water in his mouth. Oh, he's doing it. All right, and now we need to chase him, continue to wait for him to yawn, fill him up with water, and splay until he falls over and ground pound him three times. Perfect RNG! All right, we did it, Chad. We did it. Try and stay calm. Try not to panic, but the next shine we're about to get has a difficulty level of insane. Difficulty level insane. <laughs> Episode six, the secret of the dirty lake. The pollution is out of hand. The lake area is covered in thick slime. After you figured out how to skate above the lake, Head for the cave entrance, open the black and white turbo pack, and enter another world. It's funny, I've learned more stuff from this Prima guide in the past hour than I legitimately have been in the past two years of playing this game as a speedrunner. There are so many, like, intended things that I'm like, what? Okay, so I have to wait and go on to it right after it rotates. And then go on to this one. Then I have to go on to this one. Oh no, I did it wrong. I'm supposed to go on to this one, and then this one. This is a terrible path. Okay, Whew, we did it. Face the blue wall to the right, and wall jump onto it and land onto the cube. The cube you're on now rotates. Learn to walk or run, but never jump away from the surface that's rotating downwards. Don't rush this or you will fall to your death. To cross the last set of pink and blue rotating platforms, start by landing on the pink one, then move diagonally and up. Stay in the middle of each platform to optimize your chances to escape. Finally, leap onto the long green platform and run past the palm tree and grab the shine sprite. Oh, Chad, I feel so much better. This is the first level in the game that has an easy level difficulty. Basically, same thing. Just run behind Shadow Mario and use the R button to uh, to get him down. And then they have some tips if he happens to run away from you. Let's see if I need to use those tips. Saved. You know what? I guess the guide was right. It was easy difficulty. And that's Bianco Hills. There's one more bonus one, but we don't have to do that right now. After a few episodes have been completed, your shine count will be at least three and you should spot a black mass covering the raccoon's hut. Either continue with stage one, or you can clear up the gunk. Well, let's go and do the gunk. The piranha plant in the generator require the usual technique to defeat him, but needs to be hit six times instead of three. 
afterwards, the raccoon's blue coin hut will be revealed. Let's do Rika Harbor. I spent so long since I did this order. Wait, let's check out that hut first. We're gonna make sure the raccoon is good. I never realized this guy was a raccoon, by the way. Level two, Rico Harbor. Here we go. Uh, let me show you, by the way, the map, because I legitimately think the map art for each level looks really good. Check this out. Like, if you want to go for all the blue coins, this is legitimately a really good way to do it. Episode one, Gooper Blooper Breaks Out. Difficulty level, hard. Before you go for Gooper Blooper, make sure to clear the pipe entrances of Crate Debris. This cleanup affects all future levels. Wait, what? It does? I didn't even know that. Leap on top of the large red and black hold tanker at the level start. Then leap and hover and smash the group of six crates for one of the entrances. Move to the upper pier via the crane or by wall jumping the grinders on the lower pier and hovering across. Then go up to the green rooftop and then smash the crates. And then lastly, clear the final entrance by smashing the wooden crate near the curved stone column. Okay. Taking care of this giant blooper is simple. Pull off each of the blooper's arms and then grab its nose to stretch it until its beast is flattened. I have to do the arms? Alright. I forgot about that, what? I can tell you, chat, it has been a long time since I actually got these arms off. All right, let's go! So bad, look at him. All right, let's pull as far as we can. Now one more time. I feel like it's less humane way to kill this guy by actually pulling his arms off versus what the speedrun does, which is to ignore the arms. Like, I feel very cruel doing this. Shine, get Episode 3, the Cage Shine Sprite. Difficulty level, insane, estimation mark. There are two ways to get into the Shine Sprite. The regular way and the ultimate triple jump frenzy. This allows you to reach the top of the level in three triple jumps. Well, we are a speedrunner, you know what? Let's go for the fast method. I might be able to learn something for the speedrun. From your starting point, dive into the underground pipe that you remove the boxes for. Five head and emerge when you get to the rooftop near the girder that goes from the roof of the harbor. Wait, it said that it would remember if I clear the boxes off. Wait, what? I guess when I said I didn't even know that was a thing, I, I guess it was just a lie. Okay, let's go to the roof it wants me to go to though. Walk along the girder and onto the blue girder and triple jump off of it. Hover at the apex of your triple jump and scoot to the upper blue girder so he wants me to triple jump here and then angle my way to the left and go and grab that one right there. That's actually a really difficult jump for a casual. Damn, okay. Holy, okay. Triple jump, then hover onto the large pink girder with the arrow pointing up and the blue narrow glider to the right and land. Then continue up the three trampolines. We did it! You know what? Even for a casual, except for the one triple jump in the middle, I think this strat is actually easier than the than the official method. Good guy. Drake's in the chat. Episode 4, The Secret of Rico Tower. Difficulty level insane. This is actually, in my opinion, I agree. This is one of the hardest secrets in the game, in my opinion. Return to the girder of Rico Tower and use either the rock and altar or jump up. Then enter the archway hold at the top of the tower. Leap onto the first platform and run diagonally left up for it. Jump towards the second platform, aiming to land past the orange peg. Run along the left side of this platform, jump and run right as you head to the fourth platform. Then leap until the fourth platform, run with initial left turns, and then leap off onto a solid ground. Which, by the way, can I say, they call this color pink, even though it's red, and they call it yellow orange. Who wrote this guide? <laughs> Was he colorblind? Like, what? Leap onto the three cogs. Don't jump while you're positioning yourself on the cog, or you may slip off the ground that turns steeper. That's a terrible advice. Jumping makes this easier. I'm actually gonna fall down. Okay, I'm gonna follow the guide, but this is terrible.
Whew, we did it. Okay, so here, we're gonna go here. And then for this one, we now are supposed to turn our camera to the right to line ourselves up with this one. Ignore that you don't have any depth perception on the platform you're currently on. Make sure to grab this one up. Make sure to turn the camera again to not give you any depth reception so you know where you're jumping at. And then jump onto the big platform as you're slowly walking to the edge. And to make a leap for the last platform. We did it! Honestly, the advice is not bad. You can't really guide someone to do platforming. But the advice of changing a C stick is terrible. Blooper is back! This time, Blooper is on top of the helipad. Use the pipes to get to the upper, uh, to the upper pier. Leap off of the roof to the fruit bath, and then bounce off of the wheel, and then hover and drop onto the hover pad. This is almost exactly like the speed run. That's insane. All right, and then the fighting is the same as the other one. No one saw that. All right, this one basically it says where the po the uh, where the coins are. There's not like a specific guide. The only thing it tells me is to make sure to pick up the green one. So we're gonna go with the green blooper and we're basically gonna pick up all the coins. All right, and um, episode seven is Shadow Mario. Save. Shine yet. All right, we're done with the uh, Rika Harbor, Chad. Time to go to the next one, Gelato Beach. Go and defeat the enemy at the beach. All right. Episode one, Dune Buds and Sandcastles. Difficulty level insane. The Dune Buds on this beach are the key to completing this episode. Spray the middle Dune Bud, the middle of the beach. So let's first check how these buds work so you know we understand them, because he said that's important. Whoa, that's so cool! Hold on, let's see if I can do something cool, Chad. They said that I should go to the middle one here. Very nice. Okay, avoid them and enter the castle. Shadow Mario has stolen your flood again! Oh no. Wrong along the first four blocks, jump onto the set of two, and then jump down to the single blocks, and then jump down to the green platform. Use your ground pound to hammer the four nails into the platform. The bottom left one will contain a mushroom. All right, we gotta make sure to do that. I'm gonna follow the guide. The next set of platforms are smaller, so run ahead jumping over the gaps until you reach the orange block. Leap onto it and take a breather. The path curves to the right, so make sure to press the C stick to swing the camera left and right while continuously only holding up. This is the preferred control method. Says who? Now for the fun part, ascending the sand castle without falling. Jump from a slight distance up one level and again, then stop on the four orange blocks in the middle. Head out and go to the side onto the upper sand block, then leap and grab the orange block. God, this is actually scary doing it the legitimate way. From here, grab a sand block and get on top of the platoon, and then go to the two blocks on the outside and aim for the orange block to grab the one up. Yeah, don't go for the one with the shine, go for the one up. Now leap down and cross the platform again, retracing your steps, and grab onto the sand block and climb onto the other side to grab the shine sprite. Shine get! Episode 2, Mirror Madness, Tilt, Slam, and BAM! Is that really the name of the shine? Or is that something that Prima came up with? Mirror Madness, Tilt, Slam, BAM, that's so funny. Outrun the Cataquack, chain to the Squirt Nozzle, and blast him to the edge of the mirror. When the red cataquack reaches the edge, he wobbles on one leg, run to the opposite side of the mirror, and then ground pound it. Shine! 
Shine Gad. Time for episode three, Wiggler Ahoy, full steam ahead, difficulty medium. The Wiggler is angry. All right, so basically when it runs the words you spray. Okay. Okay. All right, it has some instructions once I've hit him twice. The second time you smash its belly, it charges around the rock hillside, then comes to the beach. Its path is more erratic. This leads the new bud. Okay, so when it comes close, spray it. You got it, sir. The fact that this mission isn't considered to be insane difficulty, but some other ones are, blows my mind. This is a legitimately hard level. The Sandbird is born. I am not looking forward towards this one. You have to collect eight red coins, seven of which are on the bird. Drop off the cloud and grab the red coin on the bird's center. Then grab the gold coins as well. Why? Okay, anyways. A cloud over the floating one-up glides through the middle. Take the one-up. Come on, another one-up? Okay. Okay, so we grab this one, and then we grab the one by the neck. Then we go to the wing, and then we have to, we pick up this coin, and we have to make sure we pick up the gold coins here too. Oh no, I'm gonna miss the, the one up. All right, well, I guess I can't grab the one up one from the tail. Oh God, I haven't gotten further into destructions. What do I do, what do I do? The bird banks. You will slip and fall and lose a life unless you stand on the bird's neck and walk to the flatter block side during the turn. Wait, I have to go on his neck? Yeah, you can't do the tail. It has to be the neck. I love how it says that if you fall off, try and hover and survive, and then wait for him to come back down, which takes minutes. It flaps its wings to a sign that it will stop banking. Collect only remaining coins if you want, but then hover off. Oh, this time it's optional to get the remaining coins. That's nice, at least. All right, so we have to wait for him to give us a sign that he's done and ready. That's it. That's the sign. Shine, yeah. Damn, they do Piantismo dirty. They consider the Piantismo sand sprint to be easy difficulty. Once you get on top of the alcove, he will run the brick path, but you can use the hover nozzle to go up the slippery slope on the left, saving six seconds to ensure victory. What? Speedrun strats. Okay, so we have to go right here to this blue box. And then we are supposed to do a triple jump to get up here. Then we go here. And then they recommended wall jumps to get up here. And then you hover up on this part right here. Anyone born 2050? All right, maybe this is an easy race. Wait a second. They consider the red coins in the coral reef to be a hard difficulty shine? What? Start your exploration by locating the two schools of red fish. The fish circle the reef and float through it, so grab both coins with subtle swimming. Okay, that's one. Now we can't pick these up yet. They made it very clear we have to get the red coins from the fishes before going for any of the other coins. Okay. At the reef indent on the side of the wall, check for the mount on the orange and you will find a red coin in between. Pretty sure that's here, yep. Okay, so now we check this part. Then you go across here and you follow this part. Honestly, this is not too bad. Honestly, if you struggle to find the red coins, you would find all of them by using this guide. I will give that explanation a 10 out of 10. Look, it's pretty damn detailed. All right, time for Shadow Mario. Wow, this one has almost no description because it's once again, literally just chase him and spray him down with water. All right, next stop is Pina Park. We're supposed to go to the can on the other side. No, no tongue. Bling, 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 uh-oh. What's this new form that Shadow Mario is taking? Question mark. Bowser... That's spoilers. That's literally spoilers. I'm not going to read that yet. That's spoilers. The, the park director, a not-so-wise old Noki, mistakes this battle for a new attraction and places you inside a roller coaster cart for Bowser Jr.'s target practice. 
Wait, that's why you get into the cart? Wait, what? Amazing, what a spectacle. Is this a new show, show of ours? You guys are great. Whoever hired you needs a race. I had no idea that's the lore. Wow. Aim for Mecha Bowser's head with a water rocket and fire. Basically keep hitting him multiple times and you're good. Guide said don't rush, sorry Chad. <gasps> no way! It was Bowser Jr. this whole time? Peach, come back! No! Episode 2, The Canon Conundrum. Difficulty level insane. The devious Monty Mole has commanderated a cannon at the far side of the beach. If you squirt the bullet bills for the land, they drop two gold coins. This is the key to collecting the 100 gold coin shine sprite on this level. Wait, what? Do you want me to farm these bullet bills? Chat, do we have to get the 100 one? I mean, it's a bonus one. Do we really have to? That sounds terrible. You must, the guide says so. But it's a suggestion. Honestly? This is better than I thought. This is very fast. <gasps> a golden one. This is way faster than I thought. I'm impressed. Damn, that was fast and good. Nice, shine again. All right, now how do I actually do this? As you near the cannon, Monty Mole throws out four clockwork bomb at one time. Spray it until the eye turns from red to green and it stops. And you can carry the bomb and throw it at him. Once you're inside the world, look ahead on the platforms. Each stays solid for three seconds, turns black for two seconds, and then disappears. Don't land on a platform during that one second. Thanks. So I go here, and then I go to the L there, and then I go to the straight one, and then that one. Okay, so here, 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 and here. That's pretty good instructions. Not bad. Before you leap up to the four platforms, smash the three wooden blocks. Get the middle one because it has a one-up. Oh boy, true, can't forget about those one-ups. The remaining red platforms disappear quickly. Run and press the B button to slide forward. Wow, we actually have to do B jumps on this. So we're supposed to just press the B button here. Okay. Press B, but then press A during the slide to start running to get back on your feet. Then grab the one up, turn the camera so you're looking at the final side of platforms, then slide again by tapping the B button. But if you're feeling unlucky, you can ignore the one up. Do we feel unlucky? I don't think we do. I think we feel lucky. Okay, press A. And then we just go back to pressing B. And then A. Actually good instructions. Legitimate drakes. That was actually... A really good explanation of how to do that. All right, episode three, red coins on the pirate ship. Difficulty level insane. I can't believe they actually recommend you to ride these because it's very difficult to ride these and pick up the red coins. Okay, let's see what it wants me to do to get up here. Oh, wow. Descent from underneath. Wait, does it actually tell me to hover like the speed run or what does it want me to do here? Head to the top of the mesh platform, then drop by pressing the B button and hover to get to the top. That way you don't have to head back to the top portion and deal with the enemies to get the eighth coin. I am shocked. That's what the speed run does. I'm very impressed. Episode four, the wilted sunflowers. Difficulty level, easy. That's what I've been waiting for, bro. I've been waiting for this. The amusement park is closed. So head right onto the beach and spot five massing Yoshi eggs. Are giant Yoshis in this place? No, there are giant shells with a giant snooze Koopas. And they are sucking the nutrition from the sand, causing the sunflower kids and the great sunflower to wilt. <gasps> no. Episode five, the runaway fairies wheel. No way. They have a usual method and a faster method. The usual method takes up one and a half pages of the book. 
And then you have a small tab says the faster method. I'm gonna do it exactly the way that the guy told me to do it. The guy did not tell me to do the runoff. It told me to do, go here and do a triple jump to land for that right there. Oh my God, it works. I can't believe they found that for this strategy guy. Then I have to jump down here and then jump up the row. And then after the guy disappears, jump on it right up and then jump into the star. Shine get! All right, episode six, the Yoshi go around secret. Difficulty level insane. On the shallow alcove is Yoshi. He wants a fruit. Look on the map for all the fruit locations. Oh, it actually has a map for us. Okay. Uh, he wants a pineapple. Thankfully, I know by heart where all of the fruit are. Let's see what this chest we should do. This is one of the hardest ones, so I'm actually gonna read this. Okay, so you're gonna run here and just jump and not stop. Okay. Hammer two nails with the ground pound down because the top one will give you a mushroom. Yep, can't forget about that mushroom. Okay. Wait for a red Yoshi block to pass by and then jump onto it. Ride the blue block to the archway where the one up passes. Wait, do you want me to do a lap around the blue ones to get the one up? All right, I mean, hey, we can't skip a one up. Those are important, remember, Chad. Okay, so we gotta go for this one. Then we go for the green one, like they said. I almost over jumped that. Then go for the black one and then the blue one. And then we have to ride around to pick up the one up. Now, where do I go? It basically just tells you use your eyes. It doesn't even like guide you well. It just basically says, make sure that when you start jumping, you know. Well, good thing I grabbed that one up. Damn, I was being impatient. Fine, I'll use the guy. Don't worry. I'll get the corn. I'll get the one up. I'll go to the black one, and then we go to the blue one, and then we wait for the one up. Good thing that you made sure to get both of the one ups in this level. That's true. Now we have to wait. We wait. We wait. Jump onto this one, and then jump onto the red one. Okay. Thank you, Prima Guide. The arrow indicates your next portion called optionally hammered in for a gold coin. Okay, thankfully that's the optional, unlike the one-ups that are mandatory. So we have to first wait and make sure that we look at the block movement's pattern to understand how it's moving. Okay, got that down. Sorry, I need to study the movement more. My bad, sorry. Okay, I understand now. So now, Okay, good. Good thing we study the movement. And now. Okay. If we jumped early, it's a goodbye Mario moment. Oh boy, well we bet we don't want the goodbye Mario moment. Run to the end of the two blocks, turn the camera to the right, and leap onto the floating platform to claim the shine. Let's go! Dude, shout outs to the amazing Prima guide. I think we would have been screwed if we didn't have this guide. All right, the next one is Shadow Mario in the park. Chase him and water him down. Oh my God, I'm actually gonna fail to kill him. Oh, thank God. Shine, get! All right, what's the next area this game wants us to go to now? It wants us to get the Yoshi egg. All right. This is the only part of the game that's very generic. They don't give you like in depth step by step in the same way when it comes to like catching shadow mario here so Let's do it on your own the mantha storm difficulty level insane step number one run up the hill on the left and three crates will be found immediately ground pound the middle one for a one up Oof, can't miss that. Number two, make note of where their coins are in the palm trees and the huts because you will need them. Okay, take notes, chat. It does tell you to make sure to remember. Coins, 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 coins. Okay, we took note of them. And then you go up and you talk to the hotel manager. Oh, please tell me my nightmare is over. You can save me. Oh, it's back. Okay, so first we have to go towards him, jump and hover over him. 
why I'm not spraying him from a distance, I don't know. All right, this is going to be painful because it makes sure to tell you that to kill them, you hover over them. I think this is a terrible strat, and I now see why it tells me that I need to know where the coins are because I will actually need to know that. But you know what? I'm following the guy, Chad. I think this is probably the worst advice that the Prima guide has had so far. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I misclicked. I misclicked. Okay, it recommended me to go down to the beach for this section. Okay, I'm sorry, Chad. I... Oh my god, I might die. I might legitimately die because of how terrible this strat is. I think I'm going to have to change my squirting strat. Shine get. Here we go. The next level. This seems pretty basic. Literally just make a platform and jump up. There's nothing fancy. Do the same thing for these. And jump into the mouth. Okay. Leap from the starting platform onto the row of sand bricks. Smash the first brick on the upper row from below to receive a one-up. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, I gotta make sure to get that one up. Okay, hold on. It tells me to do this. Move the C-stick to the left to line Mario up, but only when I'm running, because I need to be ready to shift my thumb to be ready to jump for the other sections. Okay. So jump, jump, then move the C-stick, move my thumb back, move the camera, jump, jump, move the C-stick, and we got it. Woof, okay. Run to the end of the multi-block brick and ground pound the three watermelons at the end. Nice little one-up. Okay, drop onto the cog platform below. It starts moving when you land. Run in bursts forward. As the cog reaches the sand block pyramid platform above, leap off of it as it travels back for the multi-platform. And then jump and then leap and then get the shine. Here we go, Mi episode three, Mysterious Hotel Delfino. This will legitimately be the hardest one that we have to do in this run. From inside the hotel, run in and then check to your left and there should be a Yoshi egg and he wants a pineapple. Okay, I checked it and he does want a pineapple. The hut selling fruit on this floor is out. The only way to continue up to the swimming pool is with Yoshi's help. Now it's time to find that pineapple. To the left of the main staircase, head to the far west toilet and look up. Okay. Go through the rooms on this floor. She's spooked by the sunset painting. Use the squirt nozzle to splash the painting until a boo appears. And then leap through the painting. In the next bedroom, two Nokis are running about in panic. Well, their fears by pounding the three boos lurking in the area. Suddenly, a ghost came out of the closet. You're welcome. In the next bedroom, take care of the Boo Memphis near the Pianta, then use the spray of the water to the pink Boo floor above, then double jump and hover to get through the secret ceiling. On the third floor, ignore the Noki and head for the single empty bookshelf. Squirt it and it will flip, allowing you to go into the next chamber. In the next room, collect the coins and talk to the Pianta. Why? Okay. Now, where did I put that thing? Hey, have you seen a pineapple anywhere around here? Spray the painting and it will rip, revealing a hole. This room is a dead end, but hoses coins and a single boo. When you're finished, return to the room where you sprayed the poster. Wait, what? I went in here to get a coin? Ground pound the lighter colored floor tile and the above square tile and Mario will fall through into a darker room. Here... There are pineapples. All right. We got the pineapple. Okay, and then we enter this room. We do a spin jump to get up here. Okay, so basically, I need to get to the center here. Okay, I'm just gonna not get the blue coins for now. Wait, wrong. Oops. It would be this one, I think. I'm so happy this is an easy glitch to perform to do this skip because this is legitimately one of the slowest shines in the game. Yoshi! 
Oh god, I actually have to gamba here. It's been so long since I gambled. The difficulty level is insane on this one as well. No wonder the hotel is in despair. The slot machines give too much money. Ground pound on top of each to receive one, three, or even six gold coins. Head to the giant slot machine left of the entrance. Note, check out the neon lit shine sprite pattern ceiling. Thanks. Spray until you get 777 to show up. Very nice. You can't cheat on this one? Let's go! Oh, God. Oh, no, I remember this. Play a special game. Use water to spin 12 panels of a giant screen until they change to a unique shine mark. Start by squirting tiny splats at the top row of the question mark. Don't stop until all four flip. The corner panel slow, then flip. Move to the second row, then third, and finally the fourth row. And keep spraying slowly and surely, and you will eventually get there. Move forward on the large platform and run to the right of this first cube and wait for a gap. Rush to the far edge and jump on the smaller platform cube and near it ends. Ride this cube to the next platform set. It doesn't rotate so you can stay still here. Leap off and face right and wait for the two large cubes to bang into each other and retreat. As soon as they came back, leap over the corner. Then jump to get the one up and go to the end. Honestly, pretty good instructions. That's not bad. Predator collect the one-up. We know what they think about one-ups in this guide. I literally can't get to it. Does the guide even tell you to get that one-up? Or is that the one one-up they don't want me to get? I need to read here. I'm curious. Wait to get this one-up later when you return with the hover. Of course, the one one-up that I try and do without reading the guide first. And it's the one time they're like, ah, actually don't get this one. Get it later. Let's go! Alright, time for King Boo. <laughs> Difficulty medium. Damn, sorry, King Boo. They don't think you're that difficult. Okay, whoever wrote this guide is literally colorblind. Like, I, I... There's no way. They called this blue. I can see in the screenshot that it's purple. It says, it says once again, look for the blue segment and then ground pound the blue segment. And the entire wheel separates its segments and will sink down. This is just like the normal boss. I'm just gonna go through the boss normally. There's not much that happens. Shine Ged! Scrubbing Serena Beach is considered easy, Chad. Pick up the barrel and throw it at the gunk near the crates. After the area below the crates are clear, turn right and press R along around the beach and clear it. I'm so glad I have a guide for this. Dude, not doing this fast is like hurting my soul. All right, then pick up a barrel and throw some barrels around. Make sure to throw the barrels. We did it! Very pog. All right, and then the next one is Shadow Mario. Literally follow him, do the same as every guide. Shine Ged! Shine Ged! That's Serena Beach done, Chad. Let's enter Noki Bay, and let's start with Uncork the Waterfall. This is a hard difficulty level. First, don't end up in the ocean. The purple goo on the water damages you one health per two seconds. Then, it recommends you to exp explore the sea level area. I should smash a few of the crates to get gold coins. Why? All right, well, let's go ahead and head over to the other side here for the hut so we can get a couple of the gold coins. Okay, where do we go now? Now it wants me to go back and talk to the Noki elder who's fishing. Are you serious? All right, let's go back to where we started to talk to the Noki man. Ah, welcome Master Mario, I presume. We have heard much about you, yes, and all of it good. I find it more interesting that the elder man says everything is good about Mario rather than hearing about him being arrested. But I, lately, I've had a terrible problem. Look up there. Oh my god, this is a cutscene? I've never talked to this man before. What? Jump from the dolphin platform and ascend the platform. Step up in the spiral in front of you. Take the pink arrow and then stand on the elevator tray. Then we're supposed to enter Mario Cram and put water in the cracked pod to go up. 
Uh, this is gonna sound like the dumbest comment ever. I didn't even realize that was a functioning elevator. And also, when I'm going around the cliff, I have to make sure to spray these arrows. I, I, I legitimately don't know why, but okay. All right, we, I don't know where to go from here, Chad. We have to clear the, the ground of the gunk, and then we have to spray the dolphin graffiti. Oh boy. Oh my god, what? What? There's a ledge here? I am not joking. Even as a casual, I just did a jump to get up. I did a wall jump. Oh, this came out in last week's patch? Okay, that makes sense. Okay, here I'm supposed to go and I'm supposed to spray the squid graffiti. I'm actually mind blown right now. Is this also a ledge? Oh my god. Dude, what? I wish I knew this as a kid. All right. Honestly, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I'm learning so much new stuff about this game from this guide. Shine, get! Episode 2, The Boss of Tricky Ruins. This I actually don't know how to do because... Even when I did my casual playthrough of this game, like casual person years ago, I still did the speedrun method. I think there's a boss at the top that you have to jump down a pipe, but like, I don't know how to get there. Okay, we're actually gonna ignore the spare gold this time to head over to talk to him. Did I just read that right? Did it just say ignore the spare gold coins? What happened to this guide? You can access it from the tunnel above. The stone wall painting hold the key to accessing the tunnel. Spray the one above your head on the cliff. Wall jump up from the ground level and head right at the junction. Leap up to the second wall indent and rest at the curved passage indent. All right, we're taking a rest like they said. Oh no, this maze. Chad, am I ever gonna find my way out of this maze? We found it! That was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna be honest. I feel a little bit bad for this guy. I literally, like, he had to, like, leave his home in the harbor because we were bullying him. And then he moves over here and we still bully him. Oh, so how does he regrow his arm so quickly, Chad? Shine, get! Episode 4, Ely Mouth's Dentist. Difficulty level? Insane! There are three rotten teeth to bash out with your nozzle, four to clean, and one to extract for a shine sprite. I don't think I've ever actually gone up this rope before to go into the eel fight, but sure. Because you can reach the eel from, like, down there. Okay, so we're supposed to go to Grandpa. You look like you're ready! The gunk is in the ocean is caused by a giant eel. It's moved into our ancestral's home. Oh my god, there's a cutscene for this! <gasps> New update! Here we go. We have to make sure we do this correctly because this, this is an insane difficult shine. As you near the base of the structure, you see the eel's four yellow eyes and a massive mouth. You have to stop and collect gold coins to increase health. Oh, I'm sad. There's like literally no strats. It just tells me how to fight him. There's not like a step by step. All right, let's go and pick up some gold coins. It's mandatory, chat. I actually did slightly mess up the strats. I actually do need to go and pick up gold coins for real and not just because of the guide, which is kind of funny. Remember to take proper care of your teeth. Shine, get. Some of the only easy difficulty shines in this game is the Piantissimo one. This is the Piantissimo Surf Swim one. I'm pissed. All right, this one literally is basically just get to the get to the finish line before him. Dude, no one loves Piantissimo. What is this? Anyone born? 1998. That's my year. Let's go. All right, this is legitimately one of the hardest uh, secret episodes in the game. So I'm curious to see what the instructions are. You appear inside a long glass tank. It's a long climb, so wall jump up on the inside of the tank and grab the top ledge. You got it. Okay, steady yourself along the tank. On the edge, you're gonna find two nails. Ground pound on the one on the right that holds a coin. And ground, 
Why? Fine. Wait. Oh, wrong side. Whatever, I got a coin. Whatever. Now leap to the green spinning platform and then walk to the end. And then leap to the yellow platform when it's horizontal. Run and leap over to the, uh, to the solid wood piece. You got it. Here we have to go to this corner and ground pound for a one up. Leap the platform and you will land on the extending platforms. Then spin jump if possible, but it is difficult to pull off. I can spin jump for you. Run from the bottom left part of the arrow hill diagonally up to the top right and jump to the wooden platform. This is so much more. This is so much more than what I did as a casual. What? Oh my god, I wish I knew that. Okay, do two wall jumps. And then jump to the last one with a quick spin. Take the take up the second nail on the platform to get a coin. I don't know which one the second nail is. Okay. Alright. We got the gold coin. And then we have to cross these platforms. There's not any special instructions to cross these platforms. Just basically don't fall down forehead. Get the last nail. And then go for the last platform. We did it! Let's go! And then the last one is medium difficulty, chase down and get Shadow Mario. Once again, it just basically goes over some instructions in case you lose him. I messed up. Oh, never mind, I didn't. Okay, that works. All right, chat, time for the last area in the game. Pianta Village. However, first, it does state that we need to get the rocket nozzle, no, rocket nozzle to actually access the next area. So we do need to actually take down Shadow Mario. It has been so long since I fought this Shadow Mario because I never go for the upgrades for the tools. Sorry, bro. We did it! Now we can finally access Pianta Village, because there was definitely no other way I could have done it. Alright. Episode 1, Chain Complete Unchained. Medium difficulty. Three chains are jumping around. Spray them, grab them by the tail, and shoot them into the pool. I don't know if it's just like these don't have that much to explain, but I swear to god, the further into this guide we get, the least descriptive they are. I don't know if these guys get like lazy or if it's just because like what else is there to explain on this? Like no strategy, no like which one to go for, just like three mad dogs, get him. Remember, always be kind to your pets. Couldn't have said it better myself, Vlad. Alright, episode two, Pientismo's Crazy Climb. Oh my god, it actually tells me to here to use the slide mechanic by spraying R and then pressing B to dive onto it. It reminds me that I can do that to move faster. Speedrun tech in the guide, unbelievable. Alright, anyone born year 2000? Shine, get! Alright, here we go. Episode 3, The Goopy Inferno. Level difficulty? Insane! <laughs> The Pianta mayor is trapped on his golden toadstool, and the village is caked in lava. Your attempt to rescue the mayor is hampered because F Shadow Mario stole your flood. Avoid the gunk and work on a route to the platform to reclaim Flood and the mayor. Oh my god! They have the regular method, they have the Toad Alley awesome shortcut method, and the lava method. There's three methods! Let's do the lava method. Dude, I'm still impressed of how much they, uh, how many shortcuts they found in this guide. All right, go to the river, swim. All right, run into the lava. Go back into the water. Run into the lava. Got him. Damn, it actually wasn't that bad because they had the lava shortcut. I'm really happy they did have that. Episode four, Chain Chomp's Bath. Okay, let's see what the guide says. All right, well, I mean, there's literally no strat other than basically telling us that we have to do this very slowly. Okay, douse him and then let him move slowly. Grab a water barrel. This is so slow, dude. Oh God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know, I'm sorry, I'm trying to follow the guide. I'm just failing. Okay. 
All right, now we go. Episode four, difficulty level insane. All right, we have to cross the rope bridge and leap over to avoid the wind spar uh, sprites. Then we have to get to the far edge and we're gonna find Yoshi wanting a random fruit. You gotta go to the tree and pick up the fruit he wants and bring him the fruit. He wants a banana. I do love the good old potassium. My man Yoshi, staying healthy. So we're gonna walk over here. And we're gonna jump onto this mushroom. Oh my god. And then we're going to jump across all of these mushrooms with Yoshi. Okay. Every time you talk to a Chuckster, it throws you. The direction they face and your own position influences where you'll be thrown. The yellow Chuckster shows you an example of a throw. Okay, we gotta get the example. When it comes to tossing, folks, I am very much... Well, I'm a Chuckster! All right, run to the pink Chuckster at the end of the first platform and face him, talk to him, and he throws you to the next platform. Okay? <laughs> Choose the larger blue one on the right. Face the platform ahead and stop in the groove between the platforms. The orange Chuckster provides a shorter throw, but it is difficult to line up. All right, so you need to stand on this line and then talk to him. Okay. Here, I need to talk to the brown Chuckster for him to throw me to the end, and I'm supposed to talk to him when he's on this side of the area. Let's go! I'm a Chuckster! For episode 6, it basically just says go around and clean up the stage, and episode 7 is Shadow Mario, so there's not really anything to read in terms of the guide on these next two. Shine again! This is the most bull guide ever they consider corona mountain to be hard and not insane they clearly have not actually spent a significant amount of time riding that boat shine get once on the crumbled pathway platform inside the massive fire lake watch your steps the molten yellow stuff below is hot magma and you will lose life if you touch it jump hover and land on all types of platforms the fire ones hover above them use the jets to douse the flames for two seconds then land on the, when it's smo starting to smoke and then just keep heading forward and traverse through this first area. Make sure, chat, we have to always hover for at least two seconds over it before we land. Okay, jump while the spike is up. Honestly, not bad instructions for how to do this. Get the one up in the box on the right. You got it. Do you remember the mud boat that we mentioned that you could actually find in Noki Bay? We recommend you to leave and... Practice steering the boat in there. Why do we mention that now? It's in the guide link as you have to do it. All right, let's head over to the boat. Squirt tiny jets of water and let your boat drift in uh, forward. Scary, isn't it? Squirt of the right side to make the boat turn left and vice versa. Drift through the lake using small amounts of water. All right, I'm practicing. Oh no, oh no, I'm losing control. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> All right, I think I got my good practice in chat. All right, we gotta make sure to pick up the one up though like it instructed us to. Drift through the lake, jutting with just small amounts of water. If your mud boat drifts near a wall, run to the front and jet water forward very slowly. Yeah, remember your practice, Linkus. I will. I'll remember my practice. Don't worry. Okay, there's instructions for this part. You pass a brick fountain. You should make sure to replenish your water here. Don't run into the brick or the slagmatides. Okay, we replenished our water. Now we need to continue to squirt small jets of water until the mud boat reaches the large island and the end of the lake. Oh, I'm not allowed to jump out of the boat yet. I have to switch to the hover nozzle as my boat gets close to the edge of the island. And then I have to jump, hover, and then land on the ground while still keeping the boat intact. Why? Okay, sure. Yeah, better keep the boat safe. Rocket through and reach the first cloud. Then squirt the clouds above you with water for the rockets that you want to go to next. Uh, I have no idea why it doesn't do anything to the clouds, but okay. 
All right, this is the end. Chat, since I made it to the top, let me show you guys the cool strats, since I see a couple of people are wondering as well, as a little bonus for the for the YouTube and Twitch audience out there. Which just remind me, if you are watching this on YouTube, you should be checking out the Twitch channel if you want to be here live for these awesome moments. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a little bit of a trick here. And now, look at this. The water is great, eh, hey, Junior? Sure is, Papa. Do -do 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 -do. Mario! You again? Don't you ever give up? Mario! How dare you come and disturb my family vacation? Alright, here instructions are pretty clear. Go around and ground pound. And time! That's it! Super Mario Sunshine. Prima percent. Intended percent. Whatever you want to call it. Done in 5 hours, 49 minutes, and 56 seconds. Now, yes, some people that have been around the stream for a long time might know that this might theoretically be a bit over 4 hours. About 4 and a half hours slower than a speedrun. But, honestly... They're cheating, and I am not. So, I still win. Now, there is something very important I want to mention. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more awesome content like this. I have tons of Nintendo content and speedrun content coming on this YouTube channel all the time, so don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, if you want to check two other awesome videos, you can click on the screen right now, and there's also a little sub button right there as well. All three, you should click on one of the videos on the screen right now. But either way, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate that, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Later, everybody. Bye-bye.